Um, the other thing we want to discuss in this chapter is embolism. What is embolism? Embolism is basically intravascular mass, you can see in this photo, um, that is moving, traveling, and occluding vessels in our body. Now it has we have different types of embolism. We have thromboembolism, which is basically a thrombus that has um, dislodged and is now moving uh, different sites in our body. Most common type of embolism is thromboembolism. The other form that we can mention is atherosclerotic embolism. So when we have atherosclerosis, uh, seen in this picture, uh, one part of this atherosclerotic plaque get dislodges and moves into and uh, travels into our uh, blood vessels and uh, what is observable here is the plus uh, presence of claustro clefts and under the microscope you can see these crystal kind of lines the last one I want to mention here is fat embolism and fat embolism is related to trauma and bone fractures so when there is uh, a trauma happening secondary to that we can have fat embolism can happen shortly after repair of fracture as well common symptoms are dyspnea and pga on the skin of the chest um, so you can here you can see fat embolism these are fat cells under the microscope and here you can see pga presents in the chest of this patient's uh, presence here all right the next um um, type of embolism that we want to talk about here is gas embolism and it's seen in the compression sickness um, So this happens in divers when they are when they move uh, down the water when they are moving the pressure of water is raising and what happens is that nitrogen is moving from high pressure in the lungs into the blood which is low pressure so now nitrogen is in their blood and if the diver swimming up the water very quickly what happens is that this nitrogen doesn't get the time uh, to go back to the lung so what happens is that formation of bubbles happens in in their um, circulation and that causes gas embolism the other um, way that we can get gas embolism is in laparoscopic surgery because we know that that we are feeling a ga abdominal cavity with gases so if there is uh, disruption of any blood vessels there can happen in gas embolism um, the other type of embolus is amniotic fluid embolus due to circulation of maternal fluid now we know that amniotic fluid is loaded with thromboplastin and thromboplastin can cause this formation of thrombus and uh, the, the common uh, symptoms that patients uh, come with is shortness of breath the IC and it's characterized by squamous cell and creatine debris now why is that is because the amniotic fluid contain the creatine and the squamous cell from the baby the baby is uh, forming all those skin and those skin are peeling off and that skin of course contain creatine and the squamous cell so you can see here uh, in this um, uh, um, amniotic fluid embolus contains the creatine debris um, the other form is a pulmonary thromboembolism. It is due to thromboembolism, commonly lay, uh, raised by deep vein thrombosis of lower extremities, so it moves into the lungs. As most often, PE is clinically silent, and that's because our lungs has um, they have two blood supplies. Then the other blood supply is intact, and that can um, keep the function of the lung healthy. Now, uh, the common sign of PE is that we have wedge-shaped necrosis, and that's because when one part of this um, branch is plugged, then all of this area is um, is not receiving bl blood, so it's going undergoing ischemia, and that causes uh, wedge-shaped um, damage. Um, the PE in rare cases can cause sudden death, and that's because if the thrombus is very big it's it's occluding both it's occluding the pulmonary artery and uh, as heart is trying to pump blood to the lungs it cannot do that and 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 that can cause this to syncope or uh, sudden death in patients